Hi and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire and I'm here today with a video that's been in the works for a long time, but I wanted to test a lot of things before sharing them. Today I'm going to talk about ways to fix and to avoid warped plates. I will first start out by talking about how to fix warped plates, any die cutting warped plates, whatever machine you have. And I have my husband who will do a little explanation of why this technique works. Then I will share with you tips for avoiding warped plates. And again, this works with whatever machine you have. And then finally, I found a great solution for the Gemini die cut machines in particular, the Gemini Junior also. And this is a way to avoid warped plates with that as many people have had problems before. So I found a solution that works and I'll share that at the end. Now keep in mind, this is just based on my experience and what has worked well for me. I am not an expert on die cut machines. You can always refer to the instruction manual of each machine on what their suggestions are. Another thing I wanted to mention is everybody has a different experience, a different type of cardstock they use, dies they use. Every machine is slightly different. Now I did my best to really test this. I have multiple machines, multiple plates, so I really test this for a few months before sharing it. So I'm hoping that it's helpful and works for you. As far as what machines I like, I have a video that I'll link here in the top right that you can check out. That video focuses on my favorite machines to use with wafer thin dies. If you want a die cut machine that handles thicker dies, I recommend the Tim Holtz Vagabond. Let's get started with the first topic. This is a magical technique, and this is fixing warped plates. Again, this works with whatever clear cutting plates you may have. I tested this with the Gemini plates, Sizzix, and Spellbinders, so you can try it with what you have. I actually asked crafters to send me some warped plates, and I'm demonstrating with those today. So this one is a Gemini clear cutting plate. You can see that it has a lot of warping to it, and we're gonna fix that today. This technique also cleans the plates, which is a bonus. Now what I do to fix warped plates is I use boiling water and I'll explain why later. Actually, my husband will explain why. I boil two large pots of water. You could actually get away with one if you wanted to, but I find two works best. You'll see that I'm using two because one will be to apply the heat and one will be to apply some pressure too. Okay, so in my sink, I have a baking sheet. You could use any kind of large tray for this. And I'm putting this warped plate so that the arch is kind of up, the warping kind of arches up, but really it doesn't matter. Now into this tray where our cutting plate is, I'm adding some hot boiling water. Please be very careful when doing this. We don't want any injuries. So I'm filling that tray. And then once I've done that, I take the other pot of boiling water, or you could use the same one, and I set it on top immediately, as fast as I can. That will apply some hot pressure because there's boiling water in that too. So this is applying heat and pressure. Now you'll notice I'm holding it here. You don't need to do that. You can completely walk away now. I just walk away and I leave it like this for about 20 minutes. I'm not sure how long it takes, but 20 minutes worked, so I went with that. So we have heat all around our plate, and pressure from the weight of that water in the pot on top. If you want to, after about 30 seconds or a minute, you can come and kind of lift the pot and wiggle it a little bit just to make sure the hot water is surrounding that plate so that you can get the best results. Okay, after about 20 minutes of leaving it to sit like this, we can remove the pot and check out our plate. Now, one thing I want you to notice is you see the stuff floating in the tray there around the plate. Those are the tiny bits of cardstock that had built up on the plate in all the nooks and crannies and cuts of the plate. So you're really cleaning this at the same time. If you want to give it a good cleaning, you could scrub it with a sponge. But I just rinse it and look at that. The warping is completely gone and your plate looks so much cleaner. You can see this is a huge improvement. Those large white lines on there were there before, they're not cracks, just wanted to mention that. If you find there still is a little bit of warping, you can repeat the process. Now I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate this a few more times. This is another Gemini cutting plate. You can see this one has been well loved. Lots of marks in it. You can even see colors of cardstock stuck in there and a significant amount of warping. So I thought I would ask my resident nerd, my husband Ken, 
if he could explain to us about how this technique of straightening plates works and why it's not best to put them in the oven at a high temperature. So Ken is a chemical engineer and he's going to use words that none of us understand, but hopefully it'll make a bit of sense. Hi, Ken. Hey. Okay. So these things that you guys cut your dyes and stuff on are made from plastics and plastics generally come in two different forms, glasses and crystalline materials. Um, Probably didn't know this, but if you go look at churches, uh, cathedrals in England and around Europe, the stained glass windows at the bottom of each of the pieces are actually thicker than they are at the top because they're glass, and glass continues to flow like a liquid for its entire life. It just takes a really long time. So these materials that you guys are using are glassy. Um, they don't melt, but what they do when they reach a certain temperature is they get really soft. And what Jennifer's doing when she puts these materials in the hot water She's raising them above a temperature that we call the glass transition temperature, which makes them flow very quickly, uh, much more quickly than they do when they're cold. So she puts these at a high temperature. The material starts to flow. It becomes soft. And then when you put weight on it, you can hold it in that flat position. And as the water cools back down, it goes back below its glass transition temperature and it doesn't flow nearly as quickly and it becomes basically flat and smooth again. So that's kind of how the that's how it works in the in the water. The reason I wouldn't put these in an oven at 400 degrees is that's a couple hundred degrees higher. And the other thing about these plastics is that they are typically filled with other materials that make them behave the way they do. We call those materials plasticizers, antioxidants, uh, antistat materials. But those materials, uh, when you get them hot enough, they will start to vaporize and come out of the plastic. And those things are usually not terribly good for you. They're fine when they're in the plastic, but if you turn them into a vapor and blow them around your house, it's not terribly healthy. And it will degrade the plastic over time because those materials are in there for a reason to give the plastic the properties it has. And there you have it from my resident nerd. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And please know I say nerd with the utmost respect. We're a nerd family and proud of it. And I appreciate him sharing that. The reason we're not on screen is we're at the lake and we look a little scummy from the sunscreen and such. And that's why there's some noises in the background. So I'm sorry about that. So, so far I have demonstrated this technique with regular size cutting plates. I did want to mention they work with large cutting plates. These are from the Gemini regular machine, so they're nice and big. You can improve the plastic shim, which I laid down there in the tray, a little bit with this. It's not as significant as with the cutting plate as I have here. But what I like to do is put the plastic shim down, then put the regular cutting plate on top. Please ignore that I'm running water in here, I had to go boil some more. Now fast forwarding, I did the exact same technique as I did before. I've let this sit for 20 minutes and what's underneath this pot is the large cutting plate and under that is the plastic shim. You can see that the large cutting plate doesn't have any warping to it anymore and the plastic shim has some improvement to it also. So you can try your other plates with this technique but it definitely works best with the regular cutting plates. Now that we've talked about ways to fix warped cutting plates, let's talk about some tips to avoid the warping in the first place. Now these are simple little tips, but I feel if you do all of them, it will help to extend the life of your plates and prevent some of the warping. And the nice thing is this works with whatever cutting plates you have, with whatever machine. I will be demonstrating with my Gemini Junior. I have my cutting plates here. I will talk next about what plates you see here. But again, these tips work with any machine. Now, one thing I recommend is to avoid always die cutting at the center of the plates. If you keep cutting in that middle section over and over and over only, you will get more warping there. So for example, I have this die in my cardstock. Instead of laying it down in the center of the plate, I'm gonna put it up in this corner. And each time I can move it to a different place. I don't keep track of which spot I've done in the past. I just try to pick something different each time if I can. That way the pressure isn't always in the middle and it will help prevent warping over time. So I have taped my die onto my cardstock and I'm gonna put it up there in the top left corner, put my plates together and run it through my die cut machine. You can usually look at your plates and see where the least amount of cutting is and start focusing on die cutting there just to get an even distribution and prevent that warping in the center. My next tip is to run your cutting plates so that the die's cutting edge is facing up. 
So here I have my die and my cardstock. The die's cutting edge is facing down. So I'll flip the plates and run them through. Now, people swear by this, uh, and I know a lot of the uh, manufacturer's guides say to do this. This isn't so much about preventing warping, but to get a better cut. So that's one thing you can try if you've had trouble with getting a good cut with whatever machine you have. But again, follow those instructions if you want, if you want to be sure, but this does work for me. Okay, now this next one I think is a really important one, and one that I haven't really talked about much in the past. It is important when you're using a large die with straight edges or any die with straight edges like this one. You've got the straight edges on all four sides. You want to avoid putting that through your machine straight. So what I like to do is put it on to my plate at a little bit of an angle. Even the slightest bit of angle will be helpful. If you've ever run a large die through your machine and you hear this really loud pop, that's usually because it's hitting like a long cutting edge, a long straight cutting edge. So when you put it at an angle like this, the pressure is distributed better and I find that you won't get that warping nearly as much. It really makes a big difference. So if you can, try to putting your large or straight edge dies at a bit of an angle as you pass through. Now, if I have a really large or detailed die like this one, I will often run it through twice, but I move its position. You could see that I moved it first and then run it through again. By doing a double pass for detailed dies, it usually will cut even better, especially if you move its position on the plate. So here you can see this cut beautifully. The reason I recommend doing a double pass is to avoid adding a shim. I find using a shim like a metal shim should be something that's only done if you really, really need it. If you use it on a regular basis or often, you will warp your plates more. At least that's what I have found from experience. So I usually avoid shims or I use a cardstock shim instead. Here I'm putting an extra piece of cardstock on the back of the die. That will give a little more pressure just where that die is and then it will help it cut better. I didn't really need it for this die, but I wanted to demonstrate it. So instead of using a full metal shim or any other added shim, just using the cardstock provides a little bit less pressure, but enough to help with the cutting. And you don't have too much pressure, which causes the warping. Now there are times where I do use the metal shim and I talk about those in videos, but it's not very often. Now my final tip is one that most people know and that is to rotate your plates. Now I tape my plates together, so I just make sure that I feed them through the machine in different directions when I can. And once in a while I will undo the tape and then flip them or rotate them and tape them back together. So whatever method you use, always make sure you rotate it. Don't always cut into the same side of your cutting plate. Don't always feed it through in the same direction. The more you rotate your plates, the more you're distributing the area where it's being cut and it prevents warping. So if you try all of these tips together, I'm really hopeful that your plates won't warp as much, but if they do, you can always use the fix that I showed you earlier. And if you have other ideas or suggestions for preventing warping on any of your machines, please leave them in the comments below for everyone to see. Okay, now let's talk about the third topic, and this is an improved Gemini plate option. Now, I have tried many things over the years to try to avoid warping of Gemini plates. I think the Gemini is a great machine that cuts like butter, but some folks have trouble with warping. I have done videos in the past where I share how I change up the sandwich and tape the plates together, and that works for me, but I know others have had trouble still, so I wanted to keep looking for an option, and I found one that works really, really, really well. And I wanted to be sure to share it with you. I have been testing this off screen for months with multiple Gemini machines, and I have been really thrilled with the results. The best part is that these plates were made to go with the Gemini, made by the same company, so you know they'll work. These are the Gemini double-sided cutting plates, and they come in the junior size and the full size. These plates are actually designed to work with Gemini's line of double-sided dies. Yes, they have dies that cut on both sides. I bought those dies, and I bought these plates to go with them, and after playing around with them, I decided to try these plates with regular dies too. And since then, I've learned many other crafters have done this too, so I'm not the only one who's had success with it. But there are two plates in a pack. 
and I use these two double-sided cutting plates. They're like this light green color with two clear Gemini plates like I've always used. You don't need the magnetic shim. You don't need the plastic shim. You don't need anything else. Just two of these plates and two clear cutting plates. These plates are very different than any other cutting plates I've ever seen and they just seem to take a beating and keep on ticking. So over on the right are two new plates. Over on the left are the plates that I've been using for some time. And before I demonstrate how to use them, I did want to mention that these plates are available in the full size for the full size Gemini 2, in case that's the machine that you have. All right, let's look at how to use these plates. These are the plates that I've been using. I do have them taped together. I'll untape them in a moment just so you can see. Now you can see there is no warping to this. These have been used like this for some time now. I do a lot of die cutting and there's absolutely no warping. So I'm hoping this is the trick everybody's looking for. I have tried self-healing mats, all the different things on the market, and none of them seem to hold up very long, but this does. Okay, so I'm going to untape these just so you can see me retape them. So I have two clear cutting plates, the regular clear Gemini cutting plates, and I have two of these double-sided cutting plates. I'm reusing my old ones before I move on to new ones. Here I have flipped this one double-sided cutting plate so that I'm using the fresh side. Remember I mentioned rotating plates is good. The reason I tape these plates together is simply so I'm handling two plates instead of four individual plates. You do not have to tape them together by any means. It's just to be um, quicker to use. When I want to use an embossing folder, I just untape them or I have an extra set of clear plates so that I can follow the instructions for an embossing folder. So again, all I'm taping together here is one clear Gemini cutting plate like I've always used, and then one of the double-sided cutting plates, the green tinted one that I showed you a moment ago. Now, after I've done this side, I will do it with the other two plates over on the right. So that is one clear cutting plate again and another of the double-sided cutting plate. So both of these sandwiches are the same. Now this one, I'm also gonna rotate it from how it was taped together before. And you'll notice that this is very cl clean compared to the other cutting plate. That is because I like to always cut into the same plate. That way this one stays nice and smooth and doesn't make any imprints on my cardstock when I run it through. That's just something I prefer to do and I know a lot of crafters do also. But if you want to, you can cut into either of these. It doesn't matter. All of your cutting will be into these green cutting plates, not the clear ones like before. So now I have my two sandwich plates. Both of them have clear cutting plate on the back and the green cutting plate on the front. And the green cutting plates always get kissed together when we run it through. So let me demonstrate. I have a piece of cardstock here and some intricate dies from Spellbinders. I am placing my cardstock onto the green cutting plate that has lots of cuts in it. That's the one I always cut into. You could tape these in place, but I'm being kind of lazy, so I'm just laying them down. I will take the other plate, the green side will go onto it, so the green plates are face to face with the die and the paper between it. Now I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine, so the two clear cutting plates are on the outside. This is so much easier than handling all of the different shims that we normally use with the Gemini. And I find that we don't get any warping and it cuts beautifully. I rarely need a shim with this. If I do, I would put a cardstock shim in there. So you can see this cut beautifully. So let me just share again with the sandwiches, just in case you wanna take a screenshot. On the bottom, we have a clear cutting plate. On top of that, we have a green double-sided cutting plate. Then we have our cardstock, then our dies, then another clear, green double-sided cutting plate, and then a clear cutting plate on top. I have had a lot of success with this and I'm hopeful that it works for you too. And this really extends the life of those clear cutting plates that we go through so often. We're not actually cutting into them anymore, so warping should not be an issue. All right, there you have it. I have spent a lot of time working on this and I, Really hope that this research pays off and helps you to get more life from your plates. If I think of anything in addition to this or anyone has anything to share, I will put it in the pinned comment below here on YouTube. 
If you also have ideas to prevent warping, please share them below in the comments. However, please know I do delete any comments that are unkind to a company or bash a product. It's just something I don't want in this space and I really want to support the industry. All right, if you have um, interest in other die cut videos, I have them linked here in the middle and you can go over to my blog to find much more information. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.